हाय संदीप हाय प्रीति हाय सिद्धार्थ भैया so uh so we'll jump to the topic without wasting uh, much time and uh, it is one of the most interesting uh, topics for me just because when i got introduced uh, with you know dog shows and and keeping dogs at home whether you know show dogs or non show dogs uh, just because my daddy was uh, a, was a professor uh, in veterinary sciences so some knowledge of uh, anatomy was there and uh, because of that every dog and everything was uh, explained in a very anatomic anatomy driven way right why a german shepherd is like that and you know why this dog even if it's not a pure bred dog you know why that dog is like that and uh, when i met uh, sharath sir uh, he actually was speaking in the same language and one day i asked him that uh, have you done any course in veterinary sciences and he said uh, no but you know i was uh, it would have been better if i would have done that course and uh, and then i found that he's a he's, he's very much enthusiastic about subjects related to anatomy movement uh, and he's very passionate about uh, you know such subject and uh, that's why i i i did lot of learning from him uh, talking about different breeds of dogs maybe dogs which are stray dogs also while they are walking around uh, you know what is uh, so different about a dog which is walking in a very different way right uh, so it was uh, very very interesting that we can connect all these things uh, in a uh, in a, in our day to day life so now we have uh, enough number of people uh, Uh, and i would like to first of all introduce myself my name is rana athiya i run this website called dogspot.in i have been a pet enthusiast since my childhood i used to pick up street puppies uh, bring them home my daddy was a professor in veterinary sciences so uh, i got a very scientific bent of uh, keeping animals and pets right from my childhood so i was kind of lucky that way and uh, uh, i started dog spot in 2007 as as a knowledge uh, sharing uh, platform and uh, i love doing this i'm very passionate about pet keeping uh, and animals uh, as such i have uh, mr sharash sharma here he has been my mentor and uh, i know him since 2008 uh, very closely i have been reading about him uh, since uh, almost uh, since my childhood Uh, but uh, over to Sharath sir to introduce himself. Thank you, Rana. Such a pleasure to be uh, on a live session in Dog Spot again. Um, he's already told you my name. I have been uh, keeping dogs uh, for the last 45 years and uh, showing and breeding them since 1977. And uh, I became an all-breed judge in 2009. So I have been judging all over the world since then. It's uh, good to be following your passion. I had uh, the privilege of being a civil servant through the IAS exam, which I quit in 2017 just to follow my passion. So I'm now totally dedicated to uh, rearing, breeding, showing, and judging dogs. Great, sir. Uh, good to have you here. And uh, you know, one of the things which you know I would like to ask uh, the first thing, and you know, I keep wondering, uh, you know, about this. term called confirmation what is confirmation and you know i have read about it on internet i have read in the books but the way you explain is out is it's very simple to understand so it would be nice for the viewers to yeah, get the yeah, i would love to you know i'll put it very simply run if you are looking at a dog in a show circuit if you are looking at a dog at a dog show and we talk about the pet dog separately but if you are looking at a dog at a dog show the basic difference between a good dog and ordinary dog and a bad dog or a bad specimen in the canine world is confirmation so what is confirmation it is loosely used in the show circuit uh, i'm sorry to say that you know people sometimes even misspell it it's not confirmation it's not f i r m it is f o r -M. so you have to confirm a uh, basically confirmation is of two types rana there's confirmation related to the breed standard we all know that every dog every dog has a breed standard there's a breed standard for a labrador for a pug for a german shepherd for a dog so you have to conform to that breed standard i mean in terms of size in terms of head shape in terms of 
color, in terms of coat, in terms of movement and temperament, the specimen is confirming to the breed standard. That's one type of confirmation. And the second type is the more important. The first type you can loosely say is related to the form, the FORM, the form of a particular specimen. And the second type of confirmation, which is more important, is related to the function. Now, each breed, you know that breeds are man-made. They have been bred and designed over centuries. And gene pool has been developed in a manner that the dog performs a certain function. So, the entire confirmation, that is the musculoskeletal system of that dog, must confirm to what the function of that breed is. If a German Shepherd cannot perform the function of a pastoral dog, a herding dog, if its structure is not compliant to help it herd, then it's not a German Shepherd. If a Labrador doesn't have the confirmation, doesn't have the lung room, doesn't have the confirmation in the front and rear, doesn't have the tail like it's supposed to be, then it's not a good swimmer, it's not a good water retriever. Similarly, for a Dachshund or a Cocker Spaniel or a Pug, what I mean to say is that the function of the breed must be kept in mind and each specimen must confirm in its structure. The musculoskeletal system must confirm and help it perform that function. So again, repeating, confirmation is of two types, confirmation to the breed standard and confirmation to the function for which is designed and bred. So sir, uh, you know, one thing uh, which is, uh, uh, which is, you know, I have been also observing is, uh, uh, is that, you know, there are different types of dog shows in the world. I mean, there are dog shows which are confirmation shows and then there are agility shows and then there are obedience shows. Yes. Uh, then there are fun shows like, you know, we have in India pet fed, then there are trade shows like IIPTF. Yes. Uh, and then there are, you know, grooming competitions and, uh, you know, sorts of things, right? Absolutely. And carnivals and stuff like that. Yeah. But if you look at, you know, all these events which are related to pet, pet, pets in, in as a whole, the yeah. confirmation shows are the largest. Yeah. I mean, if you look at words, one of the largest uh, shows related to pets, either it's a trade show, which is basically, you know, for buying and selling of perfect supplies, not pets, or confirmation shows like uh, Crowds, Westminster. Yes. Right. Sure. Why is, you know, confirmation shows such a big thing? I mean, you know, from a you know pet owner point of view, you know, you can always like to go to something which is funfair. Uh, why is that so important historically? Okay. So that's, a, that's a very nice question, Rana, but let me answer it in two parts. The first part is very simple. Confirmation shows are the largest because it involves a lot of scientific effort for a breeder to keep breeding a particular type of dog. It's not so simple that you put two Labradors together. Yes, you get a Labrador. You put a black Labrador to a black Labrador, you get a black Labrador. That's fine. But shows are there to, you know, tell people, tell the world, tell each other. You can be a Doberman breeder, I can be a Doberman breeder. And we both go to the show ring to show, look, I have spent 20 years in trying to breed this type of Doberman. My Dobermans have this front, this head, this hind angulation. And your Doberman have a different hind angulation, a different type of dog, right? And it's a competition, a healthy competition to learn from each other and to grow. And one must admit that, you know, it's also a very rewarding experience mm -hmm. to go to a confirmation dog show where there are people from all over the world, different minds competing to see who's the better one. And uh, and third and most important, that's the only way to understand genetics. Mm -hmm. You know, you can be placed in India, right? And you like a golden retriever breeder in Brazil mm -hmm. or in Argentina. Mm -hmm. How do you get that? Mm -hmm. Unless you get to see that golden retriever performing at a confirmation show, mm -hmm. beating its competition mm -hmm. under one judge, the second judge, the third judge. So proving that something is there in that dog which is better than the other dog. Mm -hmm. And, and so you emulate that breeder. You try to catch from whatever traits, characteristics, physical features that breeder has got. Mm -hmm. That is the reason for its popularity. So that, that you know, uh, brings me to another question, uh, which is a little uh, away from the main topic. Why do we need the standards and why do we need these kennel clubs? And, uh, and then these kennel clubs generally uh, organize these shows. Yeah. Very simple. Why do we need standards? 
when you were you said you had dogs as a child yeah and your father was you know you were lucky because your father was able to give you that input mm-hmm. so as a little child when uh, when you talk to a boy who's a young boy he says he wants to be a pilot why because he's got that image in his head of a uniform of a cap flying a fighter jet or flying a, a commercial plane and and it feels that you know it's something of importance likewise what do you see when you picture your picture a german shepherd in your mind mm-hmm. a particular picture mm-hmm. that picture that silhouette which you have as a knowledgeable person or i have as a judge for each breed is actually nothing but the manifestation of the standard mm-hmm. a standard is required to make that picture beautiful otherwise rana's cat is 30 inches tall and my cat is 5 inches tall and that's my imagination my cats can only be five i can't think of a cat that is 10 inches tall and you can't think of a cat which is 5 inches tall right But that doesn't work so when you and me say c80 cat yeah it might have different types of hair there are different colors of eyes yeah but cat looks like a cat a tiger looks like a tiger, tiger. yeah that picture can only be given by a standard and i mean dogs are all man made yes absolutely yeah. yeah absolutely dogs are man made dogs have been bred designed for a particular purpose why do you need a particular length of muzzle in a terrier why when you are judging a fox terrier you say oh i must have that particular length of muzzle right. if the length of muzzle in a fox terrier is not what you are looking for right it's not a good fox terrier right so standard helps you paint that picture okay but i mean uh, so so when we are talking about a good dog right a well bred dog mm-hmm. uh, right uh, or a non well 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 bred dog right mm-hmm. uh, confirmation is as important right and confirmation is something which is beyond the breed standards would you agree to that or disagree to that okay. somebody so you know there is what i'm saying is that a breed standard is something which we can read and rectify and somebody who understands the pure confirmation is actually trying to arrive on why this breed standard is actually been defined for a particular breed absolutely state. absolutely yes you have made a good point a breed standard is in black and white right you can uh, a breed standard in even the best standards book mm-hmm. if you pick up the fci standard book or the american kennel club or the uk standard book mm-hmm. a breed standard is two pages or three pages right and it's got one line about the ears one on line about the eyes right so yes you can actually memorize it. yeah and uh, in our dog show circuit when we talk amongst ourselves it's very easy to find out if someone is judging by that memorized breed standard mm-hmm. but it does it's not the end of it mm-hmm. that breed standard is just as i said helping you paint a picture mm-hmm. there is much it's a 3d beyond that 2d mm-hmm. dog standards are not two dimensional they are not in black and white right dog standards are three dimensional right you have to you have to understand you have to interpret and put it there and see whether this dog is actually confirming to it right you know when he, when, when 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 a standard says the bone is fine you will be the brisket is a particular shape the top line the croup the angle of the croup is a particular shape yeah it's fine because you've got a silhouette but when you see the animal you actually see whether that's what it is how broad you put your hands how thick the bone is how broad the skull is so that is why when you know good judges when they say yes he's a good judge because he goes over the law gets a feel right not just see and say oh yeah i stand at 90 degrees or 110 and this is the angle of the past and it seems okay no right he actually feels it so yeah you're partly right but you're entirely right because okay <laughs> got it so you know i i used to always uh, you know uh, this is this is how i understand it we humans we we made these dogs anything which we make is uh, will always have some errors because you know we do not have that luxury of nature selecting and saying that okay survival for the fittest and you know all those things do not happen with what we make absolutely and then what we will have to do is that will have to make standards for some people to uh, you know manage the dog so that he can walk and do you know perform his 
you know life more in a more healthy and active fashion uh, whatever breed yeah. uh, but uh, you know that's what i felt i mean we human beings are very selfish and we made these dogs for all selfish reasons and to control that selfishness we started making these standards that you should not go beyond this or you should go beyond this or you should be you know in line of uh, such and such thing so that is how i understand and there can be oh. agreements and disagreements no i yes. will i will start with the disagreement right one pure bred dogs have not been bred because humans are selfish mm -hmm. pure bred dogs have been bred because humans are intelligent okay right. humans know exactly what they want mm -hmm. and it is to our credit mm -hmm. that we have been able to use Mm. gene pool from different species mm. different breeds mm. and then develop something that is serving our purpose mm. it's it's scientific it a lot of labor has gone into it right. you know even today we are still developing right standards are still changing right and you know the fci the akc all the leading chemical clubs right change their standards regularly right because genetics comes into play right new forms come into play mm. and so yeah it's not selfishness it's purposeness it's it's uh, you know with a purpose right. things have been done to help create an animal mm -hmm. that is serving your purpose right got it and so yeah i think so uh, so you know i will just very quickly go through all the uh, comments and then we'll put uh, you know what comments we're going to take now and what we're going to take uh, later because yeah, you know, there are some of the subjects which we are uh uh doing uh, weasel says hi uh hi. good evening guys hi weasel thank you for the evening tea <laughs> <laughs> uh and uh, andrea uh, says that you know we should have a confirmation uh, uh knowledge around dog grooming as well uh, which is a great point uh, and Absolutely. we will, we will and definitely we will do that a good yeah. judge should be looking under the coat yeah and uh, chetna will come back to your question uh, why breed standard uh confirmation different from workability confirmation will take will go to it uh, will take it up in the end because basically we are going to talk about you know what is confirmation in more in detail and how does it affect the movement of the dog and dynamics and things like That's those true, yeah. uh and then you know mira has a great question so we'll come back uh, to these questions thank you guys for asking these questions we I, we are just taking a note of this and we'll come back sandeep you are going to come back to your uh, question thank you very much for asking these Uh, so you know, sir. Uh, while we have been talking so much about dog shows, judges, uh, uh, confirmation standards, kennel club, yeah. how does you know confirmation play any role for somebody who has a pet dog? Maybe you know somebody has a rescue dog, or maybe they have picked a dog from street uh, and given a home. Yeah. Does it uh, is is confirmation and dynamic? or mechanism of working of dogs of any relevance to such people or is it only and only for uh, show dog people no it has 100% relevance to pet owners mm -hmm. why do i say that i say it for a simple reason confirmation is important rana because it's the single thing that can result in energy saving what it what is energy saving energy saving is that i am feeding my dog let's say 300 grams of Dog spot meals, mm -hmm. or I am feeding my dog 300 grams of uh, some high grade kibble, mm -hmm. and it's got X amount of protein in it. Mm -hmm. Now, do you want my dog to burn that protein mm -hmm. in 20 minutes of exercise, mm -hmm. and then he's finished for the day, or you want my dog to have the same amount of energy, the same amount of strength of muscle and bone for the whole day, mm -hmm. regardless of show dog? Mm -hmm. My pet dog also. Right. I come back from the office and I find my dog is nice and happy and wagging, but only for five minutes. And after that, boom, because his energy is over. Mm -hmm. Now there are two reasons why energy can go: one, that it's not being fed or cared for properly, mm -hmm. and two, that it doesn't have the confirmation. So if if a dog does not have a good confirmation, uh, does it also mean that uh, it may have pain in joints more yes. early in age? Yes. Yes. Yeah, and why would that be? That would be because what is confirmation? Confirmation is the balance, the harmony, the synchronization between bone structure and muscle. Mm -hmm. So any dog that has good confirmation means that if it's got good angles in the front and complementary good angles in the rear, 
he doesn't spend any energy. Right. He walks. I, I live in a three-story house. Right. And my boxer goes up and down with me at least twenty times a day, twenty-five mm -hmm. times a day. Mm -hmm. And I am proud to say he's well confirmed. He's got beautiful angles on him, mm. so he doesn't get tired. Mm. He's going to be eight, but he's dancing and prancing the whole day because going up and down the stairs is not a serious challenge to him because his bones are supporting it. Mm. You know, I'm, I'm I don't want to bring up this example because, and I don't want to offend anybody. So my apologies in advance. When you say that. You know, a person has a weak leg, a human being, or a weak shoulder, or a weak wrist. How does it affect his functioning? He's obviously less efficient than the person who has everything perfect. It's exactly the same with a working. Mm -hmm. It can be a cow. It can be a horse. It can be a, a dog. Mm -hmm. Anything that has a particular function to perform. You have a pet, but that doesn't mean that it doesn't have to go for a walk or play around. So you know what I have seen, sir, is that uh, many times dogs of any breed, when they have got a very straight hind, uh, you know, angulation, angulation mm -hmm. and uh, what will happen is they will, start, they, you'll see that as they grow older, they will have more muscle or fat around their sh shoulders. Mm -hmm. So can can there be a relation between a, a straight angulation? In the hindquarters, on the front of front mm -hmm. angulation of the dog, and right. and and will it get into stress, and their muscles will hundred percent in distress all the time. Hundred percent. Okay, that is exactly what conformation is. I said synchronization, harmony, and balance between the front, the rear, and the muscles that are supporting. Yeah. Now you have a hindquarter which doesn't have sufficient angle. So what is the hindquarter? Let's say what is the front. This is the lower arm. Mm -hmm. This is the upper arm. This is the shoulder. Right. This is not uh, exact, so just go by the angles. Don't go by the exact. Right. Now, when you're discussing the front, you're discussing two aspects. Right. One is called the end, which is the length mm -hmm. of each of these bones. Yeah. Uh, guys, just confirm if you can see this. One is the length. Mm -hmm. So this we call the lower arm. Mm -hmm. This we call the upper arm. Right, and this we call the shoulder blade. Right. So one aspect is the length, the end, mm -hmm. and the other aspect is the A, the angle. Angle. So you have this angle and you have this angle. Right. Got it. Similarly in the height. Now you've got something which has weakness. How will that be compensated? If you have a weak leg, what do you use? A the other stick. leg. Yeah, or a walking stick. Or a walking stick. Yeah. The dog doesn't have a walking stick. Yeah, yeah. So I, I I have this you know weak left ankle, right. and what happened is that because I have this weak left left ankle, the I, heel on your right shoe right. will go. Yes. So I have always more pain now yes. because I've been using it more, yes. and that's what happens when a dog is uh, you know straight from the back uh, on, on the hind quarters. The load is on the front yes. angulation, yes. and that's why it will always be under distress and. Always, yeah, he, right. his his other parts will take on more stress, mm -hmm. and so it will start telling on them in a few years. Right, it's a natural thing. It happens when you know our hand gets hurt. Like I was wearing a thing to support my thumb. Right, I had a problem here. Right, so I was using more. I was yeah. trying to avoid this. Right, I would not like to pick up glass. I would like to pick it because up with this hand. Right, because it it hurts me. Right, so it's natural, you know. If, one assembly of your body is uh, got it. not optimum, mm -hmm. it will tell on the other side. So, you know, there is this, uh, uh, I think, uh, uh, I, at, I attended, you know, one of these seminars done by Sindhur in uh, Bangalore and they were talking about how the pain management, uh, you know, happens and then they were talking about that, you know, if, if the dog has got any pain in his back leg, uh, yeah. you'll see the shoulder spin uh, swollen and, and maybe, you know, you'll see get loaded. loaded, yeah. So, yeah. So I mean the pain, the pain management is you know part of the whole conformation piece as well because you know I maybe I was able to relate with it more just because the balancing and stuff I I read before. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Cool. It has to be healthy and energetic. All of us want our pets to be healthy and energetic. Hmm. And conformation is basic to that. Hmm. Right. So when you go and buy a puppy 
or you pick up a, a, a stray puppy or mm. you give home to a indie dog mm. you are obviously seeing that it's not limping or it's not in pain right and that's because you know uh, one part tells on the other so in physics so while we are talking about you know pet dogs versus uh, the show dogs yeah. and, and that's the topic amira has a very relevant question here she says good evening sir a lot of time breeders mention pet quality and show quality puppies could you please explain the difference between this yes yeah. sir good question thank you amira very easy to answer over the years a breeder who is dedicated to a particular breed starts developing the ability to spot confirmation in a young puppy so you know the eye gets trained to pick up the angles on the puppy the attitude the angles how the puppy moves how he carries his head how he carries his tail and and so he is able to say that you know this one has a better confirmation compared to his little brother or little sister and if he's honest and he's a dedicated uh, ethical breeder he will put out the one which is better for show quality and the one which doesn't have that ideal confirmation as a pet quality unfortunately uh, it's not just confirmation you can have equally good confirmed puppies equally healthy puppies but sometimes there are cosmetic reasons to differentiate between a uh, show puppy and a pet puppy it might be equally healthy and equally well confirmed might not have the correct coat texture so it will go between show and pet so show quality and pet quality not always confirmation it is also the cosmetics the color of the eye might be light it's beautifully made dog and the genetics says that you know it's got lighter eye than the standard preferred so if it goes to a show home it will not do well because it's got lighter eye but if it goes to a pet home and you live a beautiful healthy life because the color of the eye is cosmetic it doesn't really matter to a pet home or similarly one tooth is missing so those are the differences between a show quality puppy and a pet quality puppy got it uh, sir there is this question by uh, chetna about standard confirmation different uh, different from workability confirmation Uh, should we take it now or we do the front assembly more explain no, no, i we can do the front assembly okay, and then no the yeah we have a beautiful diagram to explain and then we can come back to take this question it's not a issue cool all right so uh, when when we were talking about you know the front assembly when we were preparing for this you were talking that you know how a dog moves and how does this whole you know three bones uh, you know affect the movement of the dog right yeah. um can you uh, for can you also explain it for the viewers oh, while yeah. you know we have been talking Easy. about it yeah Easy. today yeah no i I'll, i'll come back to this diagram there are two aspects i said the length of the three bones or the length this actually the lower arm has two bones so there are basically you know this is the shoulder blade or we call it the scapula this is the upper arm or we call it the humerus and then the lower arm has two bones the ulna and the radius and then is the paw which has four distinct parts in its uh, on its own so we'll come to that now basically the length and the angle have to be optimal uh, i'll explain it in a diagram uh, rana can you open that diagram yeah that's the one if they can see it i don't know yeah yeah they can okay oh, oh, okay i'll make it a little bigger so yeah okay Yeah. So so if you see this what am i trying to explain here is you look at the first one uh, can you help me run over this yeah. link it here as well mm-hmm. will it open here yeah just a minute guys i'll open it there yeah okay now look at the first one where it says normal shoulder now we are trying to explain how the dog moves if the angle and length of the three lower arm upper arm and shoulder are optimal so normal shoulder diagram 1 it's extending so front leg uh how do i do it yeah so here this part the lower arm has to go forward the point right there okay and then you can take the point okay so the lower arm has now started moving forward and from the way as this moves forward the angle of the upper arm and the shoulder blade is changing and this 
is in full extension. Now look where the lower arm started when it was perpendicular to the ground and then when it moves forward where it has reached it is now not really parallel but it's got a distinct angle to it and in synchronization the upper arm and the shoulder blade has moved this purple line is the line from where the leg started to the line to where the paw has reached this we call extension or reach this is the distance that one strike covers when the dog has got a good normal shoulder position now let's compare it to the figure at the bottom where the angles are less compare this shoulder angle see this pink line and see this pink line this pink line has a shoulder which is well placed it's going back so there is virtually ideally a 90 degree angle here but it's never really 90 because between 100 and 105 that is the ideal shoulder here the shoulder is straighter it's steeper what does it do when you move this leg forward the extension achieved is much less because the shoulder is not able to go back and this extension is much less you see that so compare the extension or reach of this shoulder to the extension reach of this shoulder it's simply because the angle of this particular bone the scapula the shoulder blade is not optimum is not ideal so basically we are going back to physics unless the length and angle of these three bones uh, these three uh, parts of the front assembly, the lower arm, the upper arm, and the shoulder, unless the length and angles are in perfect synchronization, you will not achieve the extension that is desired. So here, the movement has stopped because it cannot go any further. Physics doesn't allow the upper arm and the shoulder to extend beyond unless the upper arm extends beyond it can't carry the lower arm everything has is related the lower arm on the dog the lower arm cannot go beyond unless this is correlated so if this angle gets restricted this will not move forward that is why we say that it's the dog's got a straight shoulder or a steep shoulder and it's uh, actually over the years when you begin to look at a dog again and again and over the years in a showroom or at your home you realize that yes there is something don't look at the hair don't look at the color don't look at the pattern look at the bone behind it and you'll realize that the confirmation the angles make a difference to the movement of the dog uh, sir, Mr. Uh, K. Ganesh, he is a very senior uh, entrepreneur and right. uh, he's been my mentor uh, throughout my entrepreneurship life. Right. He has got a dashun ah. and uh, one of the most interesting confirmation uh, of the breed, I think, is uh, dashun, right? Yes. Uh, because it has a very unique front assembly, yes. uh, which we are talking about. And with my standard dashun, it said she should not climb stairs. How critical is that? Can some amount of stairs uh, are okay or is it completely no-no? What do you suggest? Uh, this is uh, both a question of confirmation, sir, as well as a question of the health issues related to a particular breed. Dachshunds are uh, advised not to climb stairs, not because they have a unique front assembly, but because of the length of the spine. Now, you must appreciate that every mammal has a particular structure and it's divided into two parts the first part of the structure is the one which is the head the cranium portion the shoulders and the neck and the second part of the structure is the spine and the four limbs in the human the uh, homo erectus stood and started using the front two limbs for different functions whereas in the other mammals all four limbs are used for movement so in the dark shun, my personal, I have had adoption, sir. My personal advice to you, because of the length of spine, over the years, the 
tendency to have injury on the spine is very high for decline stairs. So ideally you should pick it up. And even if it does have to go on the stairs at a very, very slow pace, it should not go running down and then running up. Because you would have noticed when dogs climb up the steps, they try to hop, which is not very good for the uh, standard duction or any duction spinal uh, alignment. So I would advise sir, minimum stay. Uh, sir, why we answer that, you know, can you also explain the unique set uh, the Dashon has in the front assembly? So yeah, that, and why, why, why that uniqueness in the front assembly? Yeah, yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a breed that was developed to hunt vermin. It's basically a small vermin killer, rats and okay. So, and it has to go inside the bird. Mm -hmm. So it needs a front assembly that gives it the scope of moving. Mm -hmm. Now, when you're judging a duction, basically you have to look, uh, and I don't know if my friend uh, whom I won't name just now is watching, he normally does, but you know, Chandra? Let, no, oh. Chandra is a top quality duction breeder. I'm sure he knows this, but uh, I don't know if Mokul is watching it. Oh, so Mokul sir actually explained me why Dashun front assembly is so unique and that's why I'm asking you. Yeah, uh, the front assembly is unique for two reasons. Right. One, it is unique because of the shape of the shoulder blade and the rib cage and how the shoulder blade becomes a sort of a case, an envelope, to keep the front assembly in place. And the second reason why it is unique is because as I said again, L and A, no better example of the coordination of L and A than in the duck shot. And when you are judging, what are you looking for? If this is three inches, so should this be three inches, and so should this be three inches. So this is the only breed where the three bones should be the same, same size. size. Yeah. And why is that, sir? That is because if they are not the same size, then this will not be able to envelop, yeah. and this will become outside right you want the front assembly the elbow to be inside the door so that so that it is able to achieve that movement right. and it gives the brisket right. the shape for it to easily go inside the door and work yes everything is yeah. you know you get the length of the lower arm yeah. to go inside without putting the neck in right and but right. if this is too short right then the dog is outside it can't reach. Right. So this has to be the right length. Will be you want the same size of all the three bones. Okay. So you see sometimes when we are judging ductions, we bend down. And then we try and see the angles on the front. Yeah. And you know, sort of find our own ways of measuring them. Right. But absolutely elementary in the duction hmm. that you know you must have the same size of bone. Hmm. Unfortunately, it's a feature that is dying and it's dying here. Right. Okay. This is still okay. This is also still okay. But you are now getting ductions three inches, one inch. Okay, so the keel is not there. Yeah, but you know, you know where does this leg go? Right. Oh yes, that it will not move from here to here yeah. because it, it cannot. It cannot. It's yeah, physics. physics. So yeah, again, Baro. Sorry, sorry. I can't, move. Yeah. can't move. Got it. So, yeah, it's very interesting. Uh, yeah. Good you asked. Yeah, I mean, uh, we, when we were discussing, I mean, I brought it up, we were thinking what breeds are um, very unique and important at the same time for understanding the conformation and action happens to be one and it Absolutely. was a great it's reminder. It's a unique breed to judge. Yeah. And uh, sometimes we should talk about uh, Dachshund. Yeah. Uh, of course, you know, interestingly now, the FCI is gradually changing the standard. There used to be three things which we used to know as children when we started learning about the right. It was L, L, L. Okay. Three L's. Okay. So this was low. Right. Long. Long. Level. All right. Like parallel. Level top line. Okay. Long in body. Mm. And low to the ground. Now the FCI is changing this loop. Okay. So the length of this three inches should be more. Yeah. Okay. 
and the keel is going down because they are saying that if there's too much of keel, it touches the ground and the dog doesn't get enough uh, penetration to, into the bottom. Right. So if it's slightly higher and this is clearance is there from the ground, the right. keel is not too deep. Okay. Then the dog has clearance and then it can dig on it. So the SCI is changing the standard. While you know now we have uh, touched upon some fundamentals and understanding, uh, this is a great time to take this question. Uh, thank you, Chetna, for asking this, asking this question. Why is breed standard confirmation different from the workability confirmation? And one of the very practical layman question has always been that you know German shepherds. When we talk about them, the confirmation German shepherds which we see in the shows, they have a different type versus when we see German Shepherds doing a lot of police work and stuff, protection work, and they're more more squarish, or sorry, you know, rectangular, maybe level top lines uh, versus uh, the confirmation ones. I have uh, a different take on this, right. but I'll answer Chetna's question. Uh, first, let me say it one thing. The top German Shepherd uh, show dogs, right. Uh, and, and I have learned this from the German Shepherd breeders who have spent uh, years and years in this breed. The top German Shepherd show dogs that confirm to the SV uh, standards, they have to undergo all the working tests. Okay. So if you are owning a top German Shepherd and it's being shown, then it has to pass the bite test. Okay. It has to pass the gun test. Mm -hmm. It has to pass the temperament test. Mm -hmm. It has to show the progeny mm -hmm. that it is producing the same year after year. Mm -hmm. So the top confirmation show dogs today mm -hmm. are not lacking in work. Okay. So why do we have you know some breeders who are just saying that we are we we breed these German shepherds which are level top line yes. and they're only for working and they're not for show. Yeah. And the show guy is are kept away from the working lines. So yeah. why is, would that, that be? That's, that's, that's because uh, of two reasons. One, that the show dogs are not really being put to work regularly as the working dogs. The working dogs are only being bred to work. So their muscular structure is different from the muscular structure that the show dogs are having. <laughs> and second is that there is a little bit of glamour in the show dogs. Mm -hmm. So the uh, front assembly, the smooth flowing top line, the length of crew mm -hmm. adds to the glamour when the shepherd goes into the mm -hmm. full uh, the trot and then the flowing trot mm -hmm. in the confirmation show. Mm -hmm. But uh, fundamentally, I disagree that the confirmation, a well bred confirmation show dog mm -hmm. can't work. It can. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, in the last 20 or 30 years, the uh, German Shepherds started getting very weak hind legs. Mm -hmm. Some of the German Shepherds got over angulated. Mm -hmm. The hawk uh, was nearly touching the ground. Yeah. They were weak, they were cow hawk. More American effect? No. Okay. Yeah, the hawk, but the Americans are not weak in the hinds, surprisingly. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It was the German dogs that were getting weak in the hinds. Okay. The American dogs had a lot of angulation. Yeah. And then uh, we had American imports yeah. many years ago. 89, 80s, I think. 80s, 80s, yeah. 80s, journey, uh, journey. Journey was Long there. Horse Journey. Yeah, Long Horse Journey. Long yeah. Horse Journey was there. Pride from the Press was there. Yeah. And uh, Avalon's Hot Shot was there. Yeah. Lots of those dogs were there. Uh, but they had a different hind structure. Right. But uh, the working dog, the angles are more moderate, mm -hmm. both in the front and the rear. And they are not stacked in the glamorous manner in which the show dogs are. Dog. So yes, the top line will have a little less length. There's a little less length of body. And there's a little, uh, you know, because they feel that uh, a, a flatter top line will give more strength of hind quarter than a sloping top mm -hmm. line. So it's a, it's a difference of opinion so, between So the I, I actually... Uh, adulterated this question a bit towards German Shepherds, but oh. speaking about other breeds, sir, uh, I think, uh, uh, you know, uh, if we go read a standard confirmation different for workability confirmation, is that true or you are, are you saying that it is not true? No, I'm not saying it is not true. I'm saying that it is open to discussion because I have come across dual champions. What is a dual champion? 
A dual champion is a dog that has a champion in the confirmation ring and a champion in the agility. Wow. Or a champion in hunting or wow. a champion in gun trial. Okay. So if you have a dual champion, that proves my point mm -hmm. that the same line can be effective both in the gun trial or the agility as well as in... So is this a statement, if somebody is making this a statement that the working line, I am breeding working line, right? Is it a novelty statement? More it normally than? comes more in pastoral dogs than in other dogs. Okay. Okay. This working line thing, uh -huh. and it comes in Rottweilers where you have the RDK. Uh, uh -huh. ADRK. Mm -hmm. But uh, all the ADRK working lines, what are being imported and shown in India. Mm -hmm. And as a matter of fact, they are carrying that certification with great pride that he, uh, he has this ADRK certificate and that ADRK certificate. Mm -hmm. So, uh, I People don't mention working line and show line in the same breed. Could you go through? I think we have already yeah. answered that. Yeah. Uh, uh, Prashant is a German Shepherd breeder. He's saying that please try to do live seminar sometime with discussions. Yes, we will do it, uh, Prashant. Uh, and we will discuss bad German Shepherd temperaments also, for some. <laughs> <laughs> uh, are issues like HD sometimes a result of incorrect uh, confirmation? Uh, yes, I think uh, that is HD is one one of the things, but you know it is more genetic. And uh, yes, if you are correcting every time a confirmation HD gets corrected over uh, uh, pedigree, uh, so that's how it is. Uh, there was a leading question from Mr. Ganesh. He asked. Uh, that is it, uh, you know, going up, uh, is it a problem for a dash run on staircase or coming down or is it both? Uh, it's both. both. Okay. If you're going up, then you're trying to gallop, put both your feet together on the next step. Mm -hmm. That puts a lot of stress on the spine. When you're going down, there's a pace to control because you've got a certain body weight and you've got a certain length of body, so you go down faster. So as far as I'm concerned, both going up and coming down is a problem for the long spine duction. Mm -hmm. So Abhishek has a great point. I think it is uh, related to what he's saying is that the kind of dogs which have been shown around in the dog shows uh, versus uh, the standard written in the uh, standard written are, are different. Uh, and people who are breeding just big bones, big heads, wrinkles is totally different and confusing uh, novice people. Uh, so I think it is also, uh, you know, sometimes it is a standard and then, then uh, people definitely start picking up more impressive dogs and sometimes they do overdo the whole thing uh, and what is your take? I totally agree with you. You see this is this, this brings up two important points. The first point is that you know if 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 a dog that is not ideally confirming to the standard wins then it becomes a sort of a model to follow and unfortunately it spoils many many generations of dogs because people start going to the winner instead of going to the correctly confirmed dog. But that is something that's a tendency because it's got a commercial angle. I'm sorry to say. It's easier for you to sell a puppy bred to a champion regardless of what he's breeding. Rather, you should go to a dog that is producing well confirmed puppies, even if he's himself not a champion. Because over the period of time, over a period of two years or three years, you will reach a stage where you will get dogs that are correctly confirmed and they will win. So don't go by one year's results where you know a dog that is ordinary in confirmation just because it wins you start breeding to it. And uh, this example which Abhishek gave of heavy big heads and wrinkles and it's all incorrect. Right. So yes, you are right. Sir, uh, this is a great question which you know we have been always, always discussing and when you said you know there are three words of confirmation to understand uh, which is uh, effort, performance and uh, Optimum, optimized effort and versus uh, performance, right? Yeah. So, so you know, Prashant is asking a great question. Please mention from where the energy starts and how it gets spread uh, towards towards the body and what is the role of poop in anatomy and how it works. Ah, oh, this is not one question. <laughs> this is five questions. <laughs> where does energy start? Yeah. Are you trying to ask me how the dog moves? Yes, energy starts normally from the front. 99.9% dogs will keep the front foot forward first and the hind will follow. Why is this? It is a simple physics. If you put the front foot ahead, it gives the dog one extra split second 
to bring the hind foot in its place. That is the only reason why energy starts and the dog puts the front foot forward. You know, you can correlate it to a dog being a front wheel drive, a rear wheel drive, or a four wheel drive. And the energy starts by putting the front foot forward. Rarely will you see a dog which will put its rear foot forward first because it will go and bang against the front foot. So you clear the way, put the front foot forward. That's part one of your question. The second part of the question is, once the front foot moves forward, the entire thing, that now you say you're taking me to the next question, which is the type of gait. Now, whether you're talking of a walk or a trot or a pace or a gallop or a canter, the energy shift starts from the front foot moving forward. And whatever type of gait the dog is indulging in, the energy will transform accordingly. So you can have a four time gate, a two time gate, a three time gate. And when I say four time gate, two time gate, three time gate, the very simple thing is how many limbs are there to support the dog? How many columns of support are there at any one point in time? That is the simple definition of two time gate, three time gate, four time gate, or canter or gallop or pace or trot. So that is how the energy moves from one part of the body to the other part of the body. And what is the role of the group? Wonderful. What is the role of the group? The group's role is most important. The group is the angle which determines how the hind quarters confirm to the forequarter. If you have a short group or you have a steep group or you have a long group or you have a flat group, all these groups, the group, uh, I don't know. Uh, can I yeah, yeah, sure. You just love to go. You know, the group, uh, and he, Prashant, is a German Shepherd breeder. You know, the group can be this. This is where the tail is starting. This is the tail. Now, this group will determine your angles of the hind assembly. Where the hind assembly is falling. Suppose you have a steep group, this angle will change. Suppose you have a flatter and longer group, this angle will get better. So this group is most important to this, uh, determine the angles of the hind assembly, particularly in dogs which do the canter and the gallop, which do the flying trot, because it gives the thrust from the hind body. Unless you have the correct angle and length of group, you can't get proper thrust. So that is how important the group is. And in your breed, it's like one of the most important things when you're judging a dog, how good the group is, because that is what gives the thrust. Uh, so uh, Arindam is asking, could you please mention the role of uh, sternum, in, sternum, sternum uh, in relation to front assembly? When you're picking a puppy, uh, are in the, uh, what is the sternum? The sternum is the front part of the chest, the feel which you can feel when you're feeling the front of the dog. It is it determines the angles of the upper arm and the shoulder blade. If you have a steep upper arm, a short upper arm, or a steep and short uh, shoulder, you will have virtually no sternum. The sternum is that part of the chest which is determined by the angles of the upper arm and the shoulder blade. So the proper angle, if it's optimum between 90 and 100 degrees, you'll have a beautiful sternum. And that is why we say when you go to pick a puppy, feel the front. Because you can't see the bones, they haven't set in well, the shoulder hasn't gone back, but you can feel the sternum. So if you put your hand under the chest and you feel that bone in the front, you are assured that the sternum is pronounced. And when you have a pronounced sternum, you know that the angles are good. Tina. Chati. Chati. Mm. Yeah. And it gives the proper shape of the ribcage, it gives enough lung room. See it in relation to the brisket. Not, don't see the sternum in uh, isolation. Uh, yeah, we, I think uh, Prashant asked for a moment. Uh, uh, movement of the dogs, we have actually covered uh, that even Prashant, our next uh, topic was uh, dog movement to cover uh, gallop, pace, trot, etc. I think uh, we have already spoken about it because you asked 
five questions in one line, uh, Prashant. Uh, so uh, Ruhi is uh, want, I think wanting to talk about border coolie and how our border coolie is different. Uh, I think there are more. Sh you you want to talk about it first? What does she want to know? Uh, I, um, I think we were talking about German Shepherds and working line, and we were trying to explain that. Uh, you know, I'm just trying to guess. Ruhi, can you please? No, it's the same. You know, yeah. the border collie is a herding dog. It's a pastoral dog. Right. And the front assembly has to perform exactly the same function. So you want a dog that has the stamina and the angles to last a whole day. You don't want a dog to be tiring because it's out in the pastures, it's out in the hills, and it's herding for the whole day. So you need a dog that has good pads, good angles in the front, complementary angles in the rear. That you need that. You need this shoulder. Yeah, so yes, exactly. that that it's uh, for every shepherd or every herding dog, it's equally true. So guys, uh, uh, we we have sorry, uh, we have a comment from uh, Anjali Ma'am. She is saying a top GSD has to undergo even a more uh, rigorous, uh, rigorous. Uh, absolutely, uh, yeah, yeah. absolutely. So I think she is answering uh, Chetna. So, Absolutely. so if you're if you're looking at Seeger dog shows or any confirmation dog show of GSD in particular, which is specialized uh, for GSDs, they have to go uh, more uh, vigorous um, uh, training. Uh, yes, yes, yes. Both right. for sound and for temperament and for muscle and for uh, you know the structure. Right. I, I totally agree with that. So, guys, if we have uh, missed any questions, uh, if you have asked, uh, please uh, you know put put it in the comment box again. Uh, because you know we have scrolled down and uh, uh, I'm not able to see in case I have if you have asked and I have missed the question uh, please do ask it again uh, sorry for so asking you this. for the more popular breeds like Labradors and the structure now, sir the Labrador structure is unique the Labrador structure determines two things one how good is the specimen going to be for two functions one to retrieve so the structure of the Labrador, the length of the shoulder and the upper arm will determine the length of the neck. Now, unfortunately, Labrador breeders are missing out on two essential things in Labrador. One is the length of the lower arm. It's not short. It's a dog that stands well on its feet because it needs to cover ground and it needs to swim. You shorten the length of the lower arm, you've got a poor swimmer, and you've got a dog that can't cover ground. One, you spoil the length of the shoulder, or sorry, the angle of the shoulder, and what do you do? You ruin the angle of the neck. You ruin the length of the neck. You need a dog that has a strong neck to carry the bird back. So for the Labrador, absolutely essential to have the correct length of lower arm and the correct length of uh, shoulder with the neck. Likewise for the Labrador's rear assembly. You don't want over angulated dog which has the entire hind assembly going behind the body. You want a moderate angle dog with broad second size that can handle the weight and transfer the energy when the dog is swimming. And the entire thing is then, you know, sort of complemented by the group. You don't want absolutely flat. You want a little rounding and a little length of group little angle to the croup. These days we find Labradors which have no croup. So this, the top line goes straight into the tail. No sir. You want a good angle of croup and you want a thick otter tail so that it acts as a rudder when the dog is swimming and gives balance. So absolutely, Labrador structure, the, 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 the shape of the rib cage, the brisket, the shape of the tail, we can have two hours on discussing only Labradors. Yeah. I'm yeah. sure. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, Girijesh Bajaj, he's asking, uh, can you please explain the confirmation of the Siberian Husky a bit in detail and what you look in a Husky when when you're judging one? So I think that's a, that's a two day or five days discussion. No, no we will go breed wise, Rana. I think we, we have enough material to go breed wise. We right. should go breed wise, but uh, I am uh, sorry, Vijay, to point this out, but I pointed it out in the beginning of the session. It's confirmation. It's not confirm. You're not confirming anything. You're confirming to something. So that is the mistake all of us make. It's F O R M. 
and it's different from confirming. So, Brijesh, uh, probably we'll do uh, more beat, beat sessions and then. Uh, but a husky can... is a sled dog, it's a sled dog, it needs uh, strength of the upper, uh, front assembly to pull. pull. It needs strength of the upper assembly for stamina, and uh, we are looking for a lot of things. Primarily, the uh, uh, the length of the lower arm, the level of the uh, uh, the top line, the uh, strength of the hind arm, the length of the hock, the the tail, the shape of the head, the shape of the eyes, the shape of the ears, how strong it is in the muzzle. Some of the things that we are looking for, and we don't want a very heavy he heavy set uh, husky. We want a fleet-footed dog. So Andrea has a question. She says, I have a miniature schnauzer, we know Andrea. <laughs> and according to breed standard, they are meant to have less pronounced chest as compared to a giant schnauzer. Can you explain why? Very simple. Uh, you know, the, the purpose for the miniature schnauzer and the giant schnauzer are totally different. And the front assembly of the two dogs is different. So as I said, Andrea, in the beginning, once we know the purpose for which a dog is bred, we will understand why it has certain angles. The terriers, for example, the angles in their front assembly are totally different. When you're judging a fox terrier or you're judging a, whether it's smooth or wired, you're looking for a totally different front assembly. You're looking for different angle in the front, in the upper arm, than you are when you're judging a, a, a Labrador or a Golden Retriever or a Dachshund, for example. So it's the function uh, which determines the angles that each uh, standard prescribes. Uh, what is uh, the function of a schnauzer as a, I, I do not know that way. Vermin, okay. And, and miniature schnauzer as well. Uh, miniature more. Miniature more. Yeah. And that's, is that why the chest is uh, not yeah, as pronounced? Just like, just like a fox terrier, just like a, a lakeland, just like a, a, what do you call it? Uh, I forgot the name of that. Uh, most of the terriers, the breed okay. name will come back to me. Got it. Uh, I hope, Andrea, that answers your question. Uh, uh, Ruhi's comment was, why, while the dash and discussion was on, how border collie can bend very low while herding? No, 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 that's temperamental. The border collie is bred to keep its head down. The border collie moves, that is typical border collie movement, that it must move with its head down because its herding instincts are such that it will herd by going at the feet or the ankle of the sheep. That is how it herds. So it puts its head down and it circles the sheep. It is very different from how a German shepherd herds. So that's a breed characteristic. And um, you know, when we are judging, we actually want to see a border collie keep its head down rather than carry its head high, like most other breeds. Yeah, and uh, border collies also have uh, a movement which is uh, they can crawl, they can they, they can actually sit and walk. Yeah, uh, yeah, crouch. So yeah, so that's can, because of the strength of their hind quarters. And and then their shoulder blades are at a distance, and they do not. That uh, shoulder blades meet each other. Yeah, yeah, they don't meet each other. Uh, so that gives them the space. Yeah, to put their arms down, arms down crouch, and crouch, and then. Yeah. Cool. So I think uh, we are uh, almost at the end of the session. In case, guys, you have questions, we are taking only questions now. We, uh, we have uh, my friend Sarah, who is the breeder of my beautiful boxer. Hello, Sarah. She's in the US. I hope all is well. So, uh, so we have a question from Ritwik. Uh, Ritwik is part of uh, team at Dogspot. He is our pet expert. And uh, we hired Ritwik because uh, he named 25 dogs, uh, you know, in alphabetical order, a dog breeds in alphabetical order when we are, when he asked him this question. Uh, so uh, he is saying that as you are talking about dog movement today, does G clause always create problem in movement uh, if present in hind leg? Uh, does having D clause in uh, hind leg in some breed is important for the function or it does? Yeah. No, it does create problem in the movement rhetoric uh, very simply because it can act as an impediment and it can get caught. If, whether it gets caught in, uh, you know, thorn or it gets caught in the brush or it gets caught in uh, some sort of the undergrowth, but uh, dew claws often get caught and if they get caught, 
when the dog is moving or if the dog is hunting and the uh, prey catches the dew claw then it can be extremely painful and it can render the dog lame so that is why we decide to remove dew claws from the front and the rear certain breeds still have dew claws like the tibetan mastiff the himalayan sheep dog but ideally i would like to see dew claws removed because they serve absolutely no purpose so uh, you know while we are taking questions preeti is uh, saying that we should have a session on dashuns yes preeti we are going to have a session on dashun very soon uh, we are doing uh, one you know such type of a uh, session every week so uh, very soon we are, we are going to have uh, have have a session on dashun and uh, we, are, we are going to talk about fire hairs as well yeah uh, so <laughs> uh and and we'll take ideas from you you know what what should we talk about uh, so arindam uh, is has another question uh, for a dog having good front how will the shoulder blade vibration uh, top line movement look in a trot as compared to a face i am not sure what he's saying for a dog having good front yes how will the shoulder blade vibration i don't know what is a shoulder, shoulder blade vibration shoulder blade vibration Uh, Arindam, I'm not clear what you want to ask. So, Arindam, shoulder blade vibration. The shoulder blade serves two purposes, Arindam. One, as I explained, it determines the reach and the extension that the entire front assembly will. And the second and more important, not more important, but equally important function that it performs is that it acts as the shock observer for the shock that the pad receives and goes right up to the neck. so both the purposes if you are talking about that i can understand vibration otherwise i don't really follow what you are wanting to say should the blade vibration yeah we uh, i think we can take it offline you can you know message us and we can connect again uh, arindam uh, and then understand the question more probably uh, there is another question by satish he is saying if if shoulder blades and you know, but let me go back to arindam for a okay. minute the okay. last part of his question he wanted to know between okay, trot and pace yeah you know trot arindam simply put is a two time movement it employs one diagonal after the other so left front and right rear move in unison and the flying trot is an extension of the trot which has a temporary period of suspension like in the german shepherd where all the four feet go off the ground you compare it to a pace pace is a two time lateral gait so both left that is left front and left right uh, left front and left rear will move once then right front and right rear will move and uh, it is also called the amble when you are judging at a dog show you do not want your dog to be pacing because you do not know how much the uh, conformation between the front left and the rear right is if the dog is pacing and it's not ideal as far as uh, the reach is concerned so you should you know sort of jerk your dog and get him to go off pace and get him to go back into uh, a trot got okay so there is a question from sitaram uh, what is your opinion about gun dogs uh, confirmation will do it separately sitaram it's sitaram also... sir <laughs> you know it as well <laughs> so i think it will take uh yeah okay uh, now i know whom i'm talking to so, <laughs> <laughs> so we'll we'll do it uh, probably in a different session sir uh, we have uh, interesting question from uh, satish if shoulder blades in the ster- uh, sternum are related how are uh, seeing good laid back shoulders with poor sternum and good sternum with a poor laid back shoulders who is seeing how How we see. are seeing. Yeah, I don't know. Actually, I, I cannot see. Yeah, I cannot see a poor sternum with a good upper arm and shoulder blade angulation. At least I haven't seen it. I, to my mind, it's uh, practically impossible to have a beautiful upper arm, a beautiful shoulder blade, the correct rib cage, and poor sternum. I mean that these are all complementary things. The sternum will be proper if the upper arm length. an angle and the shoulder blade length and angle are correct to my mind yes so uh, you know guys this brings us uh, to the end uh, of uh, uh, of of the discussion today and uh, before we go uh, i would uh, you know like to talk about uh, tomorrow's live uh, we are going to be talking about preventive healthcare for pets 
Yeah. Uh, what is uh, why do we do vaccinations? Uh, we are going to talk about parasites, internal and external both, uh, and then we are going to talk about uh, uh, you know aggression, uh, age-related problem, sterilization. Please uh, do log in at the same time. We are going to be live at uh, uh, six uh, to seven, uh, same time, same place, and uh, we do not. Um, uh, and and this 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 will be done uh, by Dr. Morton. Uh, he is uh, a very senior um, uh, veterinarian uh, from Bangalore, uh, the Blue Ridge uh, Pet Specialty and Research Center. Uh, so be there. Uh, thank you very much for asking questions and making it a, a successful session. We are going to uh, be doing more sessions. We also have a nomination form in case you know somebody who we should get on our live. Please fill in the nomination form. Uh, Saloni uh, from our team will be posting a link of the nomination uh, form uh, uh, here, uh, and uh, uh, and that's it for today. Thank you very much for uh, listening us, and uh, it was great uh, talking to you guys and uh, taking your questions and talking about uh, canine dynamics, confirmation, movement, and how canine dynamics uh, and confirmation is good for. Uh, pet uh, pet owners as well, and why they should understand uh, what is hap what is happening in in the on the confirmation side. Just, just one word, Rana. Yeah. I'd like to inform all our friends that this session on canine dynamics was the curtain raiser. It's the introduction. We want to talk more about it. If you want to talk more about it, you've got questions in mind. Send us either a WhatsApp message or an email, or just leave a note on our docspot page, and so it will help as a feedback to know how much further we should go into these sessions, what kind of experts we should bring, etc. Leave a note for us and we'll come back to you about it. And uh, thank you for being with us today. It was a lovely session. And thank you, Mr. Rana Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Bye-bye, everyone.